Okay, here's a fun one. The old conical tank, because everybody's got one of those in their backyard, right? I don't know. I did it when I was a calculus student. I think it's a calculus student rite of passage, the draining conical tank question, all right? Now it's your turn to learn how to find how quickly uh, the water is rushing out of a conical tank or how quickly the height is changing or some sort of conical tank question. They're everywhere in calculus. So water runs into a conical tank at the rate of nine feet cubed per minute. Sounds like a change in volume. The tank stands point down and has a height of 10 feet and a base radius of five. How fast is the water level rising when the water is six feet deep? All right, picture time. And if anything, even if we don't understand everything we just read, we can at least understand enough to draw the picture. So here's my conical tank. Okay. And water is running into the conical tank. So we've got water in here somewhere. Okay. Do, do, do. Water, water, water. All right. Water's running into the conical tank. Um, some other things that we know. We know that the change in the volume over time is 9 feet cubed per minute. Okay? We, we know that for a fact. We also know that the tank has a height of 10 feet. Okay? And it has a base um, radius of 5 feet. Okay, in other words, the radius where our base would be right here is 5 feet. The 10 then, the 10 would be this part right here. Okay. So here's our information. We know that we're working with uh, a, co a cone, so we need volume of a cone because we're looking at change of volume. So the volume of a cone is equal to, is it one third pi r squared h? I'm just going to double check it is. All right, so how fast is the water level rising when the water is six feet deep? So I'm going to go and change now to blue. So we are looking now for this triangle right here. All right. The question for us is dH dt. What is dH dt when h is equal to 6 feet? So uh, what to do? Well, you might notice or you might not have noticed that we've got a situation here where we've got a similar triangle action shaping up. There's a big triangle in pink. There's a little triangle in blue. They're similar triangles. So what we could do is we could look at the ratio then, uh, the ratio of the radius to the height, which would be 5 to 10. All right. The other ratio then um, that we would be interested in uh, is, is going to be this little guy right here. And we know when we're looking at that, it's going to be 6 to whatever. I don't, I don't know. And it might not even really matter. But it's got to have the same ratio right here at, in blue as my guy does in pink. Okay. So let's just look at ra radius and height right here. I've got radius and height right there. Maybe if I can eliminate one of those variables, hey, I know height is six feet. Maybe if I could rewrite this thing with an R, all R's, all R's, maybe that could help me out somehow. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply both sides down here in this equation by H. And I'm going to reduce it down, and I'm going to have R is equal to 1 half H, okay, or H over 2. So I can come back here to my volume, and that was all similar triangle work there. 
nothing fancy, no, no trick up my sleeve, times, and then, whoops, I wrote out R squared. What is R? R is this guy, H over 2 squared times H. Remember, 1 half times H is the same thing as H over 2. So look, look now, I have an equation without an R in it. So I don't have to chase around a ton of different things. I don't need the rate of change of the radius. I just need rate of change of height. So even though I know when my height is 6 feet, I'm going to need that eventually. Okay? But I don't need it right off the bat. So now let's look at the derivative of this. dv dt. And 1 third pi is a constant. And let me just move... Move this guy down just a little, a slight skosh. Let's have a rewrite. So here we've got v equals now h squared times h. That's uh, h cubed. Learned that a long time ago. So h cubed uh, over two. So h cubed one third pi times h cubed over 2 and that would be 1 sixth pi h cubed all right um whoops that should be a 4 that gum this is 4 because it's h squared and h is h over 2 so this 6 is actually a 12 there we go there we go i think we are ready to proceed all right, so I've got pi over 12 times h cubed. Derivative time, so that's going to be 3 over 12 or 1 fourth, 3 over 12 or 1 fourth h squared times the change in h over the change in time. Okay, that doesn't look too bad at all. In fact, it feels like something I can work with. Why? Because... I've got that height that we're interested in right here. I've got a change in volume right here. And so the only thing that leaves me with that I need to find that's a critical thing is the change in the height. And hey, that's what our question in this case is. So I'm just going to rewrite everything here. I'm going to substitute in all the goodies. So I'm going to have 9 equals... 1 fourth times 6 squared dh dt. Do not put the fraction together first. This is 36 over 4. Okay? It's 36 over 4. Oh, there should be a pi. Where'd my pi go? Right here. Oh, those are different colors. Yikes. Pi right here. Pi right here. All right. Times dh dt. Now, an exact answer here for me An exact answer here for me for me would be, you know, well, 36 over 4 is, is 9, so let me see if I can wrap this up in one more step. 9 pi dh dt. Divide both sides by 9 pi, so that's going to end up with 1 over pi equals dh dt. Okay, here's the deal. I don't really know what 1 over pi is. Um, and we're talking about rate of change. So I need something a little bit more hand graspable, understandable item of thing. 1 over pi is perfect exact answer. Totally 100% exact and correct. But um, give me something I can work with here. So go ahead and punch 1 over pi in your calculator and you're going to get that that's going to be 0 0.32. 0 0.32 what? Okay. Well, we're talking about how fast the water is rising. And we've been talking about everything with feet and, and, and minutes. So it's changing it. 0.32 
feet per min. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see all that on there, but the correct units on that puppy is feet per minute. And there you go. There's the the old cone related rate problem. It's it's a dandy. It's a dandy, and it's it's one you just you always get to do in calculus. And one of these days, when your kids take calculus, you can go, "Yep, I did the con I did the conical problem too, and survived it." So words of encouragement. And again, practice this problem. Uh, cover up what you just did right now. Just cover it up. Read the problem again. Read the words and see if you can't reproduce everything that was written here. There's another way that you could solve this out and get the same answer too. Uh, it also requires you um, to pay attention to this relationship right here, okay? The R over H and the 5 over 10. So see if you can work this problem out and get the exact same thing. And if you can't, come back, watch the video, get a little help, cover it up, and try again.